Right now, breaking news on News Channel 8. Polk County on fire. Flames burning through a neighborhood, forcing people to run for their lives. As high as it was, as quick, I said it's time to go. We didn't waste no time. Now all they can do is wait and watch, not knowing if there's anything left of their homes. Right now, we're bringing you live team coverage as firefighters work through the night to extinguish the flames. Good evening, I'm Keith Kate. I'm Jen Holloway. Thank you for joining us on this Friday evening. And tonight, that fire continues to burn in Polk County's Indian Lake Estates. And there was certainly grim news for those who were living in that area. Fire officials reporting now multiple homes have been lost, and those forced to evacuate will be out of their homes through the night. And tonight, we have team coverage of the Florida on fire. We'll begin with my co-anchor, Jen Lee. She's joining us live on the ground in Indian Lake Estates. Jen, tonight we heard the sheriff call this a suspicious fire. You've covered Polk County for years now. Can you recall a fire this intense in such a populated area? Well, the conditions are certainly very ripe for a fire right now. I have covered fires many times out here in Indian Lake Estates, and what makes this area so ripe for fires is the density. I want to give you some perspective on exactly where we are. Indian Lake Estates is in the farthest reaches of southeast Polk County. We are south of State Road 60 right now. We are east of Highway 27, again, in a densely populated area. They call this urban interface where the houses are dropped right basically down into the woods. I got to tell you, driving in here from Lakeland, headed east on Highway 60, my photographer and I could see the orange glow of the flames from more than a mile away. A huge plume of black smoke and smoke in the darkening sky was very impressive. It was visible for some distance. Back here on the ground, I've got to tell you that it is going to be a sleepless night for many residents. As you mentioned, there are 800 homes in this area that are now under a mandatory evacuation. The sheriff told us just a short time ago that some residents are insisting on staying in their homes. But I want to bring my colleague Avery Cotton in right now because she's been talking to some of these residents who have had to evacuate, some of the very people who are very worried tonight. What have they been telling you? Well, as you can imagine, they are sick with worry. They were evacuated here to this area, and all they could do earlier today is just stare at that black cloud that mm -hmm. you were just talking about, and they couldn't do anything. But they're also angry because tonight they're pointing fingers. They believe somebody set this fire on purpose. Shocking video shows the seconds this person had to get out of their home as bright orange flames consumed their backyard. It was a scene for hundreds of people in Indian Lake Estates. My backyard was on fire and the lot just west of me was on fire. Robert Deal was one of many who evacuated only to sit and watch the dark black smoke and wonder what he would go home to. Do you think your house is going, going to be there? I don't know. The, the way the thing was burning and the wind was blowing, it, uh, it may be burnt partially. I don't know. It was the thought on everyone's minds. You don't know if you're going to have a house when you go back in. Officials say some people will go home to devastation. Several homes were damaged in the blaze. It's too coincidental. Many people in the neighborhood believe this is the work of an arsonist. I'm angry. They had uh, three fires on a Monday, and they had two more fires on a Tuesday. Now we had two more fires today. It's really sad that somebody would think, you know, it, to me, it's no, the, the guy's a piece of dirt. Any more anything. The Florida Forest Service isn't ruling out arson. They've launched an investigation and are offering a $5,000 reward. Meanwhile, all everyone can do is wait. I'm scared about all the stuff. Hope <laughs> and pray. By the grace of God, everything will be taken care of. So clearly a lot of emotions running extremely high here tonight. Nobody knows what they're going to find when they go home. Again, the sheriff called this suspicious. He didn't call it arson. He called it suspicious, but they are going to investigate. And they're offering a $5,000 reward for anybody who may know what or who started this fire. So that's an important note there. It's also important to note that we don't know exactly how many structures have been damaged or destroyed in all of this, and that will be very important come morning. So Keith and Jen, we want to send it back to you. We're going to continue to monitor this situation. We'll have more reports for you throughout the newscast. The fire continues to burn. Thank you so much, Jen Lee, reporting live for us tonight. Well, as Jen just mentioned, the fire has been burning for many hours now, and it's very, very difficult for firefighters who are working on the front line. They have been working nonstop to get this fire under control and save as many homes as possible. Chip Wasowski is joining us now. He continues our team coverage from Indian Lake Estates. Chip. 
Yeah, a lot of tire, tired firefighters out here. Basically, what you're seeing behind me is ground zero. This is the command post where we've got dozens of firefighters getting ready to go out into the thick of things. We've got uh, rescue crews from Polk County as well as Hillsborough County mutual aid out here working to fight this fire. Uh, Division of Forestry is basically taking the lead out here as far as fighting the brush fire. What the other crews are doing is basically protecting homes and property. We have a number of different videos and pictures out here from uh, from different agencies showing the firefighters in action. It's been a very, very busy day out here. The Division of Forestry alone has 13 bulldozers out here and seven tanker trucks working to contain this thing. As I'm sure Jen mentioned, it's a huge area out here, a lot of brush, a lot of dry brush, hundreds of homes, hundreds of evacuations. Now there has been quite a bit of speculation in this area about this fire being started intentionally. I did ask the sheriff about that. He told me that while this fire is still in under investigation, if it was intentionally set, that's bad news for someone. Sheriff, if, like, if it's determined that this is arson, it's going to be a bad day for someone in Polk County. You know, the fact that anyone would put lives and property at risk through a fire is a, is a horrible event. But I can assure you of this. There will be a complete and thorough investigation by the state. We will support them. And if someone is setting these fires, we will find out who they are and we will put them in jail. So still a very active scene out here. Firefighters are going to be out here throughout the night and into the morning. We expect another update around noon tomorrow. What we're waiting on now is hopefully a ride along with one of these crews to get to actually the front line where this is all taking place. Keith and Jen. Well, Chip, we understand that Grady Judd isn't just making sure that people are leaving that area to be safe, but apparently he's already also concerned about people who were coming into that area possibly looting. Is that right? Well, absolutely, Jen. This area, there are no um, street closures around Indian Lake Estates, but the neighborhood itself is locked down. No one who does not live in this area is allowed in. So basically, they're trying to keep the looky-loos out of the area, and obviously they're trying to keep people who are trying to loot out of the area. Bad news for those folks. So. This is an area people need to avoid. If you don't live here, don't come here. This is a serious situation. Firefighters trying to get the situation under control. We don't need to have traffic problems with people trying to trying to get a look at what's happening. Out here. Or, or possibly even stealing. I like what Sheriff Judge said. You don't want to show up in your car and go home in our car, in meaning car. a police car. So uh, stay out of there. Thank you. Chip exactly. Osowski reporting live in Indian Lakes Estate tonight. Those dry, windy conditions are really a firefighter's worst nightmare. Storm to May, Chief Meteorologist Steve Jervy joining us now. Steve, this drought situation is not going away, but there is some rain perhaps coming this weekend. It's nice to look forward to a potential chance of rain, Keith, but not the kind of rain we need to really relieve these uh, severe drought situation that we have, not just in Polk County, but across a good section of the News Channel 8 viewing area. We're really going to wait till rainy season to get the kind of rain we really need, but of course any rain would be welcome at this point. Take a look at this drought situation as I mentioned, a severe drought for most of the area, that includes obviously all of Polk County, northern counties perhaps not as much, but clearly most areas have not seen a whole lot of rainfall recently and kind of adds up, it's a cumulative effect, it adds up November, December, these are all below normal, the amount below our average rainfall, January, February, March, April, running deficits and it just kind of adds up during the dry season although our rainy season last year wasn't bad. As I mentioned, it just kind of adds up over time. Winds are a little stronger across the southeastern part of Polk. You can see Winter Haven there at 13 mile per hour. Not many strong gusts, but the sea breeze was active today. And of course, in the afternoon, the winds tend to pick up just a little bit, but they are lighter. And of course, that's good news. You can see around the rest of the area, the the orange areas indicate well below normal rainfall, only 7% in places like the eastern part of Pasco County, northern part of Hardy County, not far from uh, frostproof in those areas, but all of the 
areas in below normal rainfall situation. According also our official location, 59 one hundreds is all the rainfall we've seen for April. It's typically the second driest month of the year, so that's not a surprise, but it's extra dry, almost an inch below normal. And of course for the year 2017, almost five inches below normal. And during the dry season, that's an awful lot of rain. And I talked about that that goes well back into 2016. So we're waiting for the dry, uh, uh, rainy season, guys, and that typically starts around mid-June. Steve Jervy reporting for us. Thank you, Steve. We're going to check back in with you in just a few minutes. Well, Polk County is not the only area impacted by flames tonight. A wildfire in Collier County has gotten so big, it's got the attention of Governor Rick Scott. The Golden Gate Fire has chewed through nearly 5,000 acres. Governor Scott ordered the National Guard to help evacuate more than 2,000 people from that area. Also, Sarasota County sent three fire trucks and, of course, crews to the South Florida community to get that fire under control. You're working uh, diligently with the Florida Fire Service, uh, those personnel with their tractors and planes and helicopters and so forth, as well as us protecting structures and so forth. So it, it's a little bit of a different tactical, uh, unique situation, but our, our firefighters are prepared for that. Fire officials reported one Collier County man sustaining injuries today while trying to protect his property. He was later taken to Tampa General's burn unit with second degree burns on almost 20% of his body. At least five homes are gone, and two are in danger as the flames move nearby. Several communities across the state have burn bans now in effect because of the growing wildfire danger. That includes Polk County, Highlands, Pasco, Hernando, Citrus, and Sarasota counties. Several cities, including Venice and Northport, have also issued their own burn bans. But no matter where you live right now, Steve Jervy has been reporting, it is very dry out there. You need to take precautions. Don't be burning anything and be extra careful, even with your lawnmowers right now. Absolutely. We have more fire coverage coming your way. Including the latest efforts to stop a massive fire in Polk County. We'll also take a broader look at the wildfire problem that Polk County has faced so far this year. And why tonight is actually deja vu for a lot of those residents. And now back to our breaking news. An out-of-control brush fire is burning in Polk County in the heart of a community called Indian Lake Estates. Fire officials are reporting that several homes have already been destroyed by this fire and hundreds more at risk. This fire has been burning since late this afternoon. You're looking at some file video from earlier. State arson investigators are on the scene. Fire officials describing this fire as, quote, suspicious. About 600 acres burned so far, and many of the people who live here are now staying with family, friends, or in a shelter. That's because a mandatory evacuation order remains in place for this entire neighborhood, which is made up of about 800 homes. We want to go live now back to our Jennifer Lee. She is on the ground there in Indian Lakes States tonight with the latest. Jen. Well, Keith and Jen, I got to tell you, it probably looks pretty quiet behind me. In fact, I don't even see any flashing lights behind me at this hour. There is a bit of good news. Uh, the fire, because of the conditions right now, sort of died down to a, a manageable level at this point. Still 600 acres have burned. Forestry Service folks tell us that they believe they have a pretty good line around it for the moment. However, when things heat up in the light of day tomorrow, they do expect they'll be back fighting raging flames or monitoring it throughout the night. One thing you have to keep in mind, is this area is no stranger to fires. In fact, just in February, 5,600 acres burned here in Indian Lake Estates and raged east into the River Ranch Hunt Club. At that time, 12 homes were destroyed, another 100 structures, many of those hunt camps destroyed in this very rural wooded area where lots of people have homes, fishing and hunting camps as well. Also, just last week, there were five fires set under suspicious circumstances in different areas, all within miles of each other out in this area, raising a lot of concerns about a possible fire bug. And that leads us to tonight when we heard the sheriff and other state fire investigators mention that this fire appears to be suspicious. They are offering a $5,000 reward to anyone who can give information about who may be responsible if someone is responsible for this fire. Now, the thing that we have to discuss in addition to the concerns tonight for those evacuees is what happens in the morning. I want to bring in Chief Meteorologist Steve Jervy, who can talk a little bit more about the weather conditions. Steve, you know they had a red flag warning today, right. meaning conditions were ripe for fire, and they're projecting that for again tomorrow. Yeah, many counties throughout the area, Jen, and of course anything when you have low humidity, and we're thinking about ahead of this weekend when we got cold fronts approaching the area, which we do, a cold front. Now 
know it come on later Sunday. That drops the humidity, and that also brings with it some wind, and that makes for a very high fire danger for the area. So it's something to think about, not only for tomorrow, but when you see the low humidity below 35%, you know it's fairly high. So let's check that again and see what's happening here for the weekend. Of course, the red flag warning would, will be likely issued for many counties around the area for tomorrow. But keep in mind the steady winds, increasing winds ahead of that cold front that I was talking about. Now, Max Defender 8 shows where the activity is. So just picking up on some of the moisture in the atmosphere now, not actually showing much in the way of returns in the way of precipitation. We got a very uh, good return from uh, the smoke plume across the area today. And uh, that fortunately has uh, gone away for now. But uh, as I mentioned, with the dry conditions, unfortunately, we may see uh, quite a few more fires that still could develop across the area. And that's not only true in the next couple of weeks, but it could go on perhaps all the way up until we start rainy season. Obviously, we're hoping for more rain, but we may not get a lot here. It doesn't look like certainly for the short term. Saturday, Sunday, 87, 86. Better chance of showers running at about 30% coverage for the area. That would be later on Sunday. And Ibis got a shot here. Uh, this is as they drove in front of Indian Lake Estates uh, for the area. Another shot as well coming from Lisa, uh, east of Lake Wales, kind of looking at the fire earlier on today. This is a better shot for Robert Rackleman in Lucerne Park. And again, we had brighter skies at times today and warmer temperatures. 7 a.m., 68 degrees, mild and sunny, 86 degrees at 4 p.m. Again, right now, 74 in the downtown area. This is at the airport, though. Our Dew points come back a little bit. Now, the dew point has been drier. We've been talking about humidity being uh, lower humidity, being greater uh, for fire danger. Higher humidity is actually better for fire prevention. Uh, but uh, we're looking like fairly dry all the way into the weekend. And especially once that front passes through the area, we'll see much drier atmosphere. 72 Lutz and Temple Terrace, 73 in St. Petersburg, 71 Wesley Chapel, 66 in Lake Placid. The dew point temperatures are not too bad. They come up a little bit here in the evening hours, but they were in the low 50s, especially out in that affected area. Now, our temperature trend shows good news. As you can see, an upper level trough is going to dig in, allow cooler air. For most, that'll feel pretty good with lower humidity. But as I mentioned, we always reference the fire danger with this situation. High pressure off to the east, dry air aloft, colored in red here, as you can see, remains. But most of that high level moisture, just really high clouds uh, and will stay relatively dry locally. Only a few clouds around with mild conditions in the 60s. A pop-up shower not impossible for tomorrow afternoon, but tomorrow morning again we'll see partly cloudy skies. There you see that rain chance for Saturday afternoon. A slim rain chance, but it is there. As we get into Sunday and we start to see additional moisture surge across the area, we can see showers develop potentially inland on Sunday. And then, of course, the cold front moving in from the west, you can see on the long-range forecast, sweeps through the area, and that will allow windier conditions and drier conditions, especially Monday. It'll feel pretty good, but as I mentioned, it tends to create more fuel for these fires. Next week, the ridge will build back and much warmer temperatures uh, will return. 68 degrees to start the day, a very mild morning for us. Lots of sunshine with an easterly wind. Saturday and Sunday, the rain chance is at 10% for tomorrow afternoon, but for Sunday, we'll see additional clouds. That rain chance is generally the second half of the day, afternoon, evening hours ahead of that approaching cold front. Then by Monday, you can see the changes with a high of 78 degrees. By next week, our temperatures will actually warm right back up, potentially into the upper 80s, near 90 degrees. Some of the computer models indicating temperatures possibly into the low 90s. So we're definitely warming up as we head toward May, and it has been a very warm and dry winter and spring, and that's partly, obviously, the reason why we're in this, uh, this condition, this fire condition, Jen. All right, thank you, Stephen. We hate to hear that those conditions will continue tomorrow, but because of that uncertainty with the impacts on the fire and whether that fire will continue to rage back up again tomorrow, they are keeping these mandatory evacu evacuations for the 800 homes out here in effect at least through the morning. They're going to reassess that situation tomorrow at about noon. And Keith and Jen, the hope is that they will be allowed tomorrow morning to let residents back in their houses. But at this point, they really have to wait and see exactly Exactly how those conditions play out in the morning and exactly what impact that has on the fire. Yeah, you just feel for all of those homeowners, it's a long night for them and that one man especially and others who are concerned that this could be 
an arson, that someone intentionally did this to put their homes, their lives, their, their just everything in, in jeopardy everything like this. But they work it's hard for. to imagine. Yeah, Jen Lee, live in Indian Lake Estates. We're going to come back to you here in just a moment. In the meantime, a little bit more about this arson idea as this fire rages on. Polk County fire crews are asking for your help. They now want to know if somebody purposely started the fire and maybe some others the last few weeks. Coming up after the break, we'll hear from some residents who are concerned about a potential arsonist in their community. Are we going to go back now to the scene of a breaking fire happening in Polk County? Yeah, Chip Osowski continues our team coverage now. He's back in Indian Lake Estates. Chip, we saw you earlier, but you've had a chance to go a little bit closer to this fire. What have you seen? Absolutely, Keith and Jen, Polk County Fire Rescue giving us a rare look at just how close this fire has gotten to area residents. As you can see, it is still burning in this area right here. Uh, one of the chiefs gave us a ride along out here and showed us it is still actively burning. There's still wind out here. Chief Tony Kraus, tell us a little bit about what we're seeing. What are some of the dangers? What are some of the challenges you guys are facing out here? Oh, weather's affecting us on this fire. It's, uh, it's what's driven this, uh, this far. Um, we're kind of in the middle of it right now, but this stretches for probably another mile or so to the west, and uh, uh, I would expect that the weather tomorrow would affect it uh, some more, turn it up some more. That's, that's why we want people evacuated from here, because they may believe they're safe right now, but uh, this was way outside our span of control. And when we came here today. And conditions change very quickly. As you can see, again, fire still burning. You can see there are tractor tracks from the Division of Forestry out here. Definitely a very dangerous situation for folks out here in Polk County. Back to you, Keith and Jack. Yeah, it certainly looks uh, much calmer than what we've seen for most of the day today. Uh, thank you, Chip Osowski, reporting for us. And uh, we're going to go back to Jen Lee and check in with her before we, uh, before we end this newscast. That's right. Stick around. We'll be right back with the latest. A quiet scene here out at Indian Lake Estates compared to what we have witnessed here all day long. 800 homes under a mandatory evacuation and at the height of this 600 acre fire, flames were raging. Leaping flames 100, 150 feet in the air, spreading very quickly. At this hour, the Forestry Service feels they have it largely surrounded at this time and they have a lot of resources on the ground. Throughout the day, they have 13 bulldozers, seven brush trucks, a helicopter. They have 29 personnel on the ground. They will continue to monitor the fire lines throughout the night. They are not giving us a containment percentage at this point. They just tell us 600 acres have burned so far. They have a red flag warning in the conditions tomorrow. And so the fire is likely to rage on in the heat of the day tomorrow. Keith and Jen, that's the latest here from Indian Lake Estates. I'm going to send it back to you. All Thank right. you, Jen. And a reminder, we're going to bring you the latest updates on the Indian Lake Estates fire online on WFLA.com. You can also get updates on your smartphone with our free News Channel 8 app and on our social media sites, Facebook and Twitter. And Steve, a final check on the weather. A uh, warm start the day tomorrow, a little bit about 3-4 degrees above our average. Plenty of sunshine, add some afternoon clouds, slight rain chance inland in the afternoon, then our rain chances increase to 30 percent second half of Sunday. And then behind that, of course, cold front moves through later Sunday into Monday, breezy, drier, and a little bit cooler. That'll feel pretty nice, but again, it also brings you back to talking about fires. The windy, dry conditions make for a higher fire danger. That right. wind makes it tough. Our yeah, thoughts and prayers are with those families in Polk County. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll leave you with a live look once again at the fire in Indian Lake Estates. Good night.